can do all these actions, which is just about everything, um, which is adduction, abduction, flexion, extension, circumduction, and opposition. Um, it acts as though it's a ball and socket joint, but it's actually not. Thank you, Miss Mia. <laughs> Give me lots of feedback. Um, it is, it's a saddle joint, but saddle joints act like ball and socket joints. I don't know why. I actually just think they're the coolest thing ever um, because it really is a saddle. It's two C's. It's two C's fitting together, and this C can move back and forth this way, and this C can move back and forth this way, which means they can get all the motions um, that a ball and socket can get without a ball and socket. And it's two, uh, it's like an upside down saddle on top of another upside down saddle. And they're called, it's called a saddle joint. Uh, it's the only example I know of, please correct me if I'm wrong, in your body. Um, there's, thank you, Miss <laughs> You're like my fact checker now. Um, so anyway, it's the only example I can think of a, a, a saddle joint, but it acts like a ball and socket. It, it basically can do anything. Um, although they don't swivel very well. So, you know, my shoulders really can medially and laterally rotate and your thumb actually doesn't really rotate. So I guess that would be the difference. Uh, you, you have eight, you have eight thumb muscles, four up in your forearm, about halfway up going down to your thumb and four in your hand. And most, not all, most of the muscles up in your forearm are are long muscles, they have the word longest in them, not all of them, but th uh, three of them do, of the four, and you've got four muscles in your thumb, um, and two of them have the word brevis in them. Um, so, kind of the long ones live up here, and as you might think, the small ones live down here, right? Four and four, though. You've got eight, four, and four. Um, and we're going to find out that all the long ones attach uh, definitely to the radius. Some attach to the radius and the ulna. And does anybody remember what interosseous membrane is? Mr. Blygen, please. That's the um, fascia in between the bone. Yeah. Between the Beautifully put, between your radius and ulna you have, and by the way, you also have this between your tibia and fibula, right? Between your uh, radius and ulna, you've got uh, fascia, interosseous, which literally means between the bone membrane. It's fascia. Um, it's there for all sorts of really important reasons. There are nerves and veins that actually run through the fascia to get to one side or the other, so there are holes in it in certain places. But it gives a lot of strength to your forearms. Because anytime you tie, like, like if you've got two sticks here and then you tie them together, they, they become more than doubly strong. It really kind of helps them to offset strength. So these two bones have this, this membrane between them. And what's cool about a membrane between your bones is they can still do the stuff we talked about. They can still roll over each other, but they've got this strength between them. And so the muscles of your, <laughs> the muscles of your thumb uh, that live up on your forearm, the four muscles up here, uh, I believe all of them, attached to the inner osseous membrane. Don't get me wrong, they also attach usually to the radius, sometimes the ulna, but always to the inner osseous membrane. Why am I making a big deal out of this? Because when you are rubbing up the arm to rub, I'm trying to give you guys, by the way, what I've done the entire class, which is we are going to talk about specifics, but if you forget all the specifics, I want you to be able to walk away with a couple of key pieces of information that will serve you for the rest of your life. And essentially, if you grab somebody's forearm about halfway up, around the radius and seek to also get between the radius and the ulna so you're in the inner osseous membrane and you kind of rub up in here, you are probably basically hitting all four uh, upper thumb muscles just by doing this. These are easy. They're all right here. The other four are all right here. They're easy to find. Uh, but up here, you can rub this area around the radius going past the radius into the inner osseous membrane, which should feel kind of sore actually, um, on both sides, and you can get all those thumb muscles. So if somebody came to me specifically with thumb problems, I really would be like working up in here like this, down and all that stuff, wiggling all this around, getting the radius. Uh, one of your thumb muscles goes over the ulna, but if you get in the inner osseous, it's almost more important than that. 
and trace that down to the thumb and you kind of take care of a lot of those muscles. So let's look at specifics now of these muscles, but it gives you an idea uh, that you've got eight thumb muscles, four on the forearm, um, kind of conjugating around the radius and the interosseous membrane, even though one does attach to the ulna, but they're still around the radius. That's the best place to start. And then we're going to talk about the four muscles of the four thumb muscles of your hand, three of which make up this pad on my thumb. What do we call this pad on my thumb, by the way? Yes, Miss Mejia. Travis, we've been doing the hand race thing the whole class. I was trying to follow the memo, so I'm like, oh, it's me this time. I knew you were coming. Yeah, Mr. Blygem, what? Come on, raise your hand. So what, but I actually honestly didn't hear him. What is this thumb pad called, Miss Mejia? I think it's the thenar eminence. It is the thenar eminence. And over here is the hypothenar eminence of your pinky. The thenar eminence is made up of three thumb muscles. The fourth thumb muscle is my webbing between right in here. That is, that is a, a, a thumb muscle. Um, by the way, all eight thumb muscles have what word in them? Yep, I saw one person mouth it correctly. The rest of you should know this. Every last one of you should know this. Least, yeah, you're not, you're, you're cut off. Yeah. Somebody else, anybody besides Mr. Blyger and Ms. Mejia, sick of hearing from them. Uh, I'm teasing. Um, what do all eight thumb muscles have in common word-wise? Mr. Placencia, please. Hollisus. Hollisus. I tell you this and I make a big deal out of it because you'll leave here one day. You'll be doing shoulder and back massages all day long, and then somebody will come in three months from now, and they'll be like, blah, 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 policist, da, da, da. And you're going to go, what? And if you remember what I just told you, you can literally go and start working this. And even if they're like, well, I said policist brevis down here, and you're like, I know, I'm just working the entire group of thumb muscles. And they'll instantly be like, oh, this person knows their anatomy. Like, if somebody says policist, I grab up the arm and down to the thumb. I know we're talking about thumb. Don't forget policies for the thumb. Don't forget holuses for the toe. I'm scared that some of you have already forgotten them, but that's all right. Um, so all these have the word policies in them. Let's talk about them. Do, 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 do. Eight thumb muscles, all with their word policies in them. Here we go. I love this. Look how cool hands are. Oh my gosh. Yeah. I think if I ever got a tattoo, I think this is what it would be. I'd have all the muscles tattooed on the outside of my body. Wouldn't that be cool? Yeah. And then you'd have to put sleeves over your sleeves when you're taking a test because you could cheat otherwise. Anyway, sorry, bad joke. Okay. Um, look really quickly here. You can see the thumb muscles running up here, grab it on the forearm, kind of where Tapscott said they would. Yay. Um, by the way, <laughs> You've got an extensor longus and extensor brevis for your pollicis. Extensor pollicis longus, extensor pollicis brevis. What side of the forearm do you suppose those extensors are on? Yes, the posterior forearm. Thank you. Because all extensors are on the posterior forearm. There really is. There's an extensor longus and extensor brevis. One hooks onto the radius and one hooks on the uh, ulna and both hook onto the inner osseous membrane, and they pull your thumb back. They are extensors, right? There is a flexor pollicis longus. Where would we find the flexor pollicis longus? Thank you. It grabs onto the radius, I believe, but it's on the front. It's on the anterior forearm. Yes. Cool. Uh, there's also an abductor pollicis longus. That's, it's, it's on the back, but it's towards the side. Just like you think an abductor would. All right, good. We we're using using that knowledge wisely. Okay, um, Miss Miss Sarno, please talk to me. Uh, how about um, how about more like um, uh, how about more like um, both dorsal inside. Inside, attached with the thumb also, or 
Uh, it, it is. It there, is there's, yeah, we're going to do those tomorrow. The inter ossei of the hand. Yes. They're very much like the feet. And there's, there's some in there too. Yes. Between your bones. Yeah. Yeah. So we'll do that tomorrow. But you're right. You're right. Palmar and dorsal inter ossei. Yeah. There's two of them. Yeah. And there are lumbricals of the hand too. So we'll get to that tomorrow. Is that okay? Good. Okay. All right, everybody. So uh, long muscles of the thumb. Here is the abductor pollicis. Look how it grabs onto the outside of, uh, of that first uh, metacarpal so that it can pull my thumb out. It does exactly what it says it'll do. It likes to, it has an origin, by the way, on um, on both the ulna and the radius and their interosseous membrane. But if you get in here, like I said, you're going to get almost all of it. And that is the abductor pollicis longus. Yeah? Yeah. We'll come back to that in a second. Then you've got an extensor pollicis longus, an extensor pollicis brevis. Both live on the forearm. They're both on the back side. One hooks, one has an origin on the radius, one has an origin on the ulna. You probably don't really need to remember which one is which. They both, though, grab onto the inner osseous membrane. Um, all of these do. And they, they grab onto the back side of the thumb so that they can extend it. When your thumb extends, it goes back just like your fingers do. And that is, that is the um, extensor, pollicis longus, and brevis. Uh, one of the other differences is one grabs on to the uh, proximal phalange, the other one grabs on to the distal phalange. So they can help you control just pulling your thumb out or pulling the tip of your thumb out. Gives you some control and choice over that. Theoretically, I can pull my thumb out and then I can pull the top out, except I can't control my thumb that well. But anyway, you get the idea. Yeah, so there's two phalanges there. And one's grabbing on the, the more proximal one, one's grabbing on the more distal one. And quite often they work together, but they don't have to. So you could bring out your thumb and keep it bent, which would mean you're using you're using um, your extensor pollicis brevis just to pull your thumb out, and then extensor pollicis longus to pull out the top. Where is oh? Let's go to the next one. And last but not least, on the forearm is the flexor. Pollicis longus, which is found on the anterior forearm, on the radius, and once again on the interosseous membrane, and it goes all the way up to the the the, uh, the distal uh, phalange. Don't pull your pull your thumb anteriorly down here. Yeah. So let's pause right there for a second. Okay. So that gives us four uh, thumb muscles of the forearm, what they call long, long thumb muscles, even though one is a brevis, but they call them long because they're longer than the ones in your hand. Who can tell me the names of those four thumb muscles that are found in the forearm? Anybody? I can call on somebody. Yeah? Miss Hawks, can you tell me one of the muscles we just discussed now? You don't have to tell me all four. Pick one. Did you say one that's on the forearm? Yes. Or yeah, what, they call them long thumb muscles, but yes, one's found on the forearm. One of the four we just discussed. The abductor pollicis longus? Abductor pollicis longus, yeah. Cool. Awesome. So that's one, abductor pollicis longus. Yep, Mr. Brown, can you tell me another one, sir? He said, trying to make sure you're there with me, paying attention. Mr. Brown. Mr. Brown? <laughs> Mr. Brown. 
All right, Mr. Brown, it's the last time we're coming back to you. Uh, <laughs> thank you, Ms. Trotter. Talk to me. So there's the extensor pulse as long as extensor pulse is brevis. And then flexor pulse is long as? Mm -hmm. Yep. And then what pulls it out to the side? I know we are, I know Ms. Hawks already told us this one. And then that's the adductor pulse as long as? AV ductor. Oh, AV ductor. Yeah, because yeah, it's moving away. Yeah. Very cool. Guys, the way you can remember this, if you, you know, if you want to, is really from up on my form, the only thing I can do is pull this back in. I can't, I pull it out of it. I can't pull it back in from my form. That has to be this webbing here in my hand. And then from my form, all I can do too is pull it back, which is an extension, or pull it forward, which is an flexion. Everything else has to happen up in the hand. So it's not surprising that you have an extensor pollicis longus, flexor pollicis longus, and AV ductor pollicis longus. The one that's hard to remember is there's also an extensor pollicis brevis. Um, and that's because there is no other extensor pollicis brevis up in the thumb here. It's all done in the forearm. So those are the four uh, thumb muscles. Yeah? Yay. Um, oh, Miss Walker, why? Yes. I never asked you your gratitude. You didn't. And you didn't tell me I didn't ask you your gratitude. Yeah. Shame on Tap Scott. <laughs> um, okay. All right. Miss Walker, you have two choices. You can tell me the four thumb muscles or you can tell me your gratitude. I could do both. Oh, I even like that. It's even better. Okay. Um, I'm very sorry, by the way, Miss Walker. It was just a complete okay. oversight. Um, what are you grateful for? I'm grateful for In and Out and Pink Lemonade. Heck yeah. All right. I think there's a lot of people who agree with you. All right. Yeah. In and Out and Pink Lemonade. And what are the four thumb muscles? What are the four long thumb muscles found up on the forearm? Um, abductor pollicis longus, extensor pollicis longus, flexor pollicis longus, and is there a brevis? Yeah, there's an extensor pollicis brevis. Okay. Yeah, it, which is a little bit weird. We don't, we're not used to long brevises being up the forearm or up the leg. Usually it, yeah. we call that, a, it's because there's no space for an extensor on the back of your thumb right here. Very good. Thank you, ma'am, and I'm sorry. Okay, everybody, that's the four thumb muscles. Miss, Mr. Brown, how are we doing? <laughs> Thank you, sir. Hey, sir, what are the four thumb muscles, sir? Extensor pollicis brevis. You're saying pollicis with a P, right? Pollicis, I thought it was, the P was silent. No, no, no. No, no, the P is, you definitely say pollicis, like, like Polly won a cracker. Pollicis. Uh, pollicis. For your toe, you say holicis, like holitosis, um, or like hallway. Yeah. So, but anyway, pollicis. Yeah. Thank you, sir. All right, everybody. Moving right along. Yay. Let's go to the short thumb muscles, yeah? Um, doo -doo -doo. Did your book, by the way, talk to you guys, or the video talk to you guys about the snuff box of your thumb? It's not important to massage at all, but if you lift up your thumb sometimes, you'll see a little indentation right there. It's created by, uh, shoot, it's created by the extensor pollicis longus and extensor pollicis brevis and abductor pollicis, the stuff on the side. They call it the snuff box because people used to put tobacco there, they still do, and snuff it. And it fits right in there. And they call it the stuff box. And it's that little, that's that little, you don't have one, Miss me. Poor thing. How are you gonna? How are you going to uh, snuff tobacco? Oh my gosh! Yeah, you gotta pull your thumb back really hard. Yeah, mm. not happy. Miss Trotter doesn't either. Okay, well, sorry. You'll just have you'll just have to smoke it instead or something. I don't know. Yeah. 
Okay. Anyway, it's called the stuff box. It's not important at all. Okay. Um, I do like what this person is doing here, though, where they are moving the hand while they're working the thumb muscles and such. Super smart. Anyway, okay. Let's talk about the thumb itself. This gets kind of important because this will tie into carpal tunnel. What? Yes, this gets kind of important because it will tie into carpal tunnel. I might have mentioned carpal tunnel a couple of times in this class. Um, I might have mentioned that there is um, there is a flexor retinaculum that runs across your wrist that creates the top of the carpal tunnel. Um, and your, your tendons, and your flexor tendons and your arteries and your veins and most importantly your nerve for your hand runs under this tunnel and people get problems in here. And a surgeon will sometimes go in there and cut the flexor retinaculum to make space in there and then scar tissue builds up and then it gets worse again and then they go back in and cut it again. What if you could stretch the flexor retinaculum? Wouldn't that be nice? We're heading there. So you've, um, you've got three muscles that make up your thumb pad, which is the, the uh, thenar eminence. And the first one is the abductor pollicis brevis. Remember we had an ab abductor pollicis longus, this abductor pollicis brevis. It's the furthermost, the most lateral edge of your, your um, thenar eminence, your thumb pad. And it helps to pull your thumb out. It's right down here. But what I think is much more interesting <laughs> is that its origin is in the flexor retinaculum. The origin of the abductor pollicis brevis is in the flexor retinaculum. That would not be as interesting is the fact that you also have a flexor pollicis brevis that helps to pull your thumb forward. It's right next to it, also in the thenar eminence. And its origin is in the flexor retinaculum. Wait a second. I thought this one had an origin in the flexor retinaculum. Oh, it does. This one does too. Abductor pollicis brevis and flexor pollicis brevis um, both have origins in the flexor retinaculum. We have another muscle coming up. Yes, Mr. Brown, please, sir. So if these muscles originate in the flexor retinaculum, what happens to them when they cut it? Uh, these muscles are okay because they grab onto another other stuff, uh, and you're not completely tied to that anchor. Uh, my bigger problem is when they cut the flexor retinaculum, your body usually builds up scar tissue in there. And that usually makes the carpal tunnel smaller anyway, and that creates problems down the road too. There are, yeah, that's the real issue. Um, so because it's not just anch anchored to the flexor retinaculum, it's also anchored to some of your carpal bones too. So your thumb will be okay. Good question though. So flexor pollicis brevis, abductor pollicis brevis, and opponens pollicis. This is the third muscle even more over that makes up your thenar eminence. It doesn't say brevis because there is no longus. There's only one opinator. And your opponens pollicis helps to pull your thumb across. And its origin is in the flexor retinaculum. So it is a bit of an overly simplified statement, but it is a true statement that the three muscles that make up your thenar eminence are, are all thumb muscles. They're all pollicises. There's an abductor pollicis brevis, flexor pollicis brevis, and an opponens pollicis. And they all have origins on the flexor retinaculum. Therefore, if I take somebody's thumb pad and grab it here and roll it out while I'm grabbing somebody's pinky and rolling it out to spread, to spread out this hand on both sides, which I would literally do by like grabbing the thumb pad here, grabbing the pinky pad here and pushing 
with my palms and back to roll my hands out with all my might. I wouldn't do it fast, but I would really do it hard. I can actually pull open without digging in the wrist. I'm grabbing on to the anchors for the flexor retinaculum and I can actually stretch it. And I can do that with somebody laying on the table. And it's highly effective. And this is because those three thumb muscles have origins on the flexor retinaculum, which is why this can greatly help with carpal tunnel. You should still, by the way, be looking for thoracic outlet syndrome and massaging the neck and down the arms. You should still be massaging the forearms heavily, especially the flexor muscles there that come from the medial epicondyle and go up through there. You should be doing all that. Um, but, 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 this is a great way to start to stretch out the top of the carpal tunnel, which is all fascia. Yes. Cool. So, that's an important point. Yes. So, um, Miss Allure, can you tell me the shared origin of all three thumb muscles that make up your thenar eminence? I'll take it. Flexor retinaculum. Thank you, ma'am. I appreciate it. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Um, Ms. Routson, can you tell me the shared origin that all three muscles that make up your thenar eminence, your thumb pad, have? The thenar eminence? Yeah. What's... I'm sorry, the flexor retinaculum? Yeah. I came yeah. out wrong. That's all right. I was like, yeah, that's what we're talking about. Perfect. Thank you, everybody. I just <laughs> want to check in and make sure we're paying attention. That's awesome. I don't mean you two in particular. I meant the group. Um, awesome. All right. So we only have one thumb muscle left to talk about, right? And it's here. If, if there is contractile tissue in here and it contracts, what action is it going to create? If this shortens... Yeah, thank you, Ms. Essence. Adduction. So what might we call this muscle in here? Yeah, I just saw Adductor it. pollicis. Thank you. Adductor pollicis. And that is what we call it. And there's only one. So let me share this really quick. So there's not a brevis or a longus. Longus or brevis, anything like that. Okay. But there is an important point to make about this. All right. So... This is the adductor pollicis. Um, it is your only adductor pollicis, no longus, no brevis. And it actually, it's actually has an origin um, on the third metacarpal, not the second metacarpal. And I'm going to make a point about that. That's why I'm pointing out to you right now. Okay? All right, let me make a point about that where you can see. Do, do, do. Good. So it looks to us like I've got a muscle running from my thumb, my first metacarpal, to my second metacarpal. That's what it looks like, but that's not what it is. It actually goes all the way over to your third. Why am I making a big deal out of this? For one thing, how many people get sore in here? If you've, I mean, massage therapist for sure, also anytime like I do yard work or work around the house, like this gets really sore. It's part of your gripping muscle. And when you go to rub it, you can rub it like this, but if you actually will get between the second and third metacarpal, you'll actually hit the origins better than other massage therapists with that are just working in the webbing. Remember, it goes over to here. And I'll show you what I mean on the whiteboard here. Do, 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 do. Do, do. Okay. Um, can you guys see the hand? It's, it's one of the last drawings I'm going to make. You guys might want to take a picture of it. I'll sign this for you if you want, Mr. T. Okay. Um, let's just make sure we know how to name bones on the hand again. Do, do we? I hope we remember this. Um, Mr. Riedel, what is this bone right here? That one. Metacarpal? Yes, he's absolutely right. It's a metacarpal because these are carpals, and so these are metacarpals. Which metacarpal is it? It's either the first or the fifth. 
Excellent, sir. This might tip you off. This is the one finger that only has two phalanges. All, these all have three. What? There's the distal and the proximal? Yes. Sir, you are 100% correct on everything so far. What might you guess this is? So you now, since you now know it's the thumb, do you suspect the thumb is your first metacarpal or your fifth? If I had to guess, I'd say it's the first. Thank you, sir. You just got 100%. That's perfect. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Riedel is exactly right. This is one. This is how we count in anatomy. One, two, three, four, five. This is first metacarpal. Boom. Second, third, fourth, fifth. This is distal phalange number one, proximal phalange number one, all that kind of stuff. This thumb muscle does not do just this. That is not actually accurate. This thumb muscle does this. And so you actually really want to massage between the second and third. It's very easy to get the, the webbing. But the webbing can get actually really tired of you guys digging on it. If you really care about, everybody here loves origin insertion work by now, I'm sure. You know the difference, right? When somebody really gets into origins insertions. Well, if somebody likes intricate hand work, um, or intricate feet work, all this kind of stuff. They notice the little stuff you do. And if you will just not work just their pad, but actually get over between these two metacarpals, second and third, you'll actually get the insertions better. And you can sit there and use your thumb, if you want, to split up between those. Because this is actually the origin of this muscle here. I'm not saying don't rub this. I'm saying just realize it goes all the way over. Most people think it goes over to the second, and it doesn't. It actually skips over the second, gets all the way to the third over here. And it makes a big difference. Just in the quality. These are like little nuanced things. This is the difference between like, you guys are at that level now where, where if you were cooks, you could all make, you could all make macaroni and cheese, right? But you know, there's that person that when they make the, the macaroni and cheese, they make like a delicious box macaroni and cheese, but then they throw in some cheddar and things like that they have at home and doctor it up and make it just a little bit better, right? And these are the little things that start to matter that you guys have been picking up along, along the way. And handwork is actually really great to be in, in detail on. So anyway, that's it. That's the eight thumb muscles. Ms. Estes, were you going to say something? Oh, sorry, when you lean forward, I assume you're unmuting. That's why. I've been trained. This means something. No, it does not. Okay. Um, all right, everybody. Let's take a 15-minute break, and then we'll come back and wrap that up. Thumb muscle stuff. Thank you.